Hello? Hello, I'm looking for Gerard Damiano, Jr. Oh, you found him. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, man, do we got questions for okay. you. Hold well, on. Welcome to Ham Radio. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Ham well, Radio Show. I hope I've got... You hope you got some answers? I, I hope, hope you I do, got too. Answers. Yeah. All right, so I do have to bring this up. Your father, by the way, has a track record of movies that, you know, I mean, he he's passed away right now, you know, God rest his soul. But the man had a legacy on film of all the stuff that he directed that are countless amazing movies that are porn royalty. Like I said before, it's, it's legendary films. Uh, Deep Throat, uh, The Devil and Miss Jones. What other movies did he also make? Because I want, I want to make the list even bigger. Um, well, he actually directed 48 films before his death. Now, the the films uh, towards the end of his life were all uh, short on... Um, I'm hearing my voice. <laughs> well, you sound good to us, it's, so go ahead. You sound great on us. Okay, on well, I'm, echo going? I'm hearing myself on repeat when I speak. Is there is there some way we can correct that? Uh, if you want to, you know what? I'll call you right back then. Let's see what happens. That's yeah, probably the line because we're hitting. Okay, the yeah, you sound perfect Thank over you. here, Gerard. But yeah, we'll find out right now. Give me one second. I'll hang up on you. Everyone, say goodbye, Gerard. Bye, Gerard. And then I'll call you right back. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Gerard is hearing an echo. So let us fix. I chose your sign of a weak signal. Yes, that's the show. Sometimes. A weak signal. No, on his end. Yeah, I know. We're always blaming everybody else. Well, what is it? Hello? Gerard, how do you sound now? Uh, that sounds much better. Oh, yeah! That's Excellent. Good. Everyone in the studio was blaming okay. you. I said, not my Gerard. Okay. He wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, all right, so you were saying so, towards the end of his career, uh, he was making movies that... Well, he had gone out to California where the... Uh, video industry started so he was making shot on video features um but those films were not as interesting as some of his earlier work so mm -hmm. you know other than deep throat and devil and miss jones that most people nowadays have still heard of um the story of joanna which he felt was his his finest work um memories within miss aggie was another film that was actually reviewed by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences nice. um, back in 1974. And even though it didn't get the nomination, uh, my dad got a real kick uh, out of the fact that uh, everyone in the Academy had to watch a dirty movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. That's good. <laughs> they but, were all crazy. All right, so I, I do have to ask this question. The character that was in uh, Boogie Nights, was that based on the, the Burt Reynolds character? Was that based on your father? Well, you know, that comes up a lot because certainly um, Burt Reynolds styled himself after my father. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson as well went for the look of my father. Um, but the character himself is based on, I think it's an amalgamation of different directors. Of course, yeah. um, but, uh, you know, my father wasn't the kind of, the kind of guy that would hang out with all the stars and, you know, snort coke get by the pool with them and like right. that. That wasn't him at all. He would go home after the shoot and just want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of a lot of what is in Boogie Nights is not really his story at all. But there is one thing that um, um, that really stands out, and that's you know there's a scene where his character uh, Jack Horner, the director, mm. gives a little bit of a speech about film and filmmaking um, with uh, the advent of video mm. and all the you know the young kids on the set. They're saying, "Oh, video is the wave of the future, and you shoot on video." And he gives a little speech there, and that could have been my father. You know, that were, was his sentiment exactly. He loved film. He loved filmmaking. At first, he was optimistic about video, but when uh, uh, a lot of the adult films started to be shot on video, he saw how the quality quickly dropped out, mm -hmm. and uh, an industry was born, and things really changed. Yeah. Um, so... That part of Boogie Nights, that that could have been him. The words that, that were spoken in that were him. The rest of it, you know, it's fiction, although Burt Reynolds certainly looked like him in the movie. Yeah. Well, your father was the Steven Spielberg of smut. I mean, when it comes down to he, he was he was an artiste. And that's the that's why Deep Throat 
is a legendary movie that crossed all fucking social barriers. It crossed all lines when it came out, and literally everyone and their mother went to go see it. So how did that feel when you now were you even alive? Because you're not that old of a dude. How old are you? <laughs> I've actually just turned 58. So, right. um, <laughs> yes, not only was I alive, but my sister and I were both um, in Miami um, with our family during the filming of Deep Throat. Oh, my God. How great was that time to be a young man? Um, and... well, it, well, to be honest, it was a great time, but not for the reasons that you might think, because you have to remember I'm only seven years old at the time. Yeah. So my sister and I didn't even really know what sex was. Um, but we were aware that our father was making a film, and we were excited about that. And also, it was shot in January, and we left New York to go to Florida, which we had never been there before. And so, you know, to be swimming in the pool, that was exciting yep. for us. Now, you know, a lot of the people that worked on the film, cast and crew both, were you know, close friends of my father and mother. And so, you know, it was like family down there. So we had a lot of fun, you know, um, Harry Reams was our Uncle Herbie. <laughs> so, um, you know, when when my dad would yell cut, you know, uh, Uncle Herbie and I would be throwing the football around by the pool and like that. So it really was, you know, a good time for us. Just crazy. I mean, like, and think about it. You're seven. You don't know anything that's going on. You're just swimming, having a fancy free time Not in Florida. Not freezing in New Not York. Not freezing your ass off in New York. And you're just <laughs> and, – and, and, like – while you're swimming in the pool, three doors down, you know, Linda Lovelace is uh, doing a scene there. You know what I mean? Like, how great is that? How Like, the things that you missed, because you were seven there, Ger you know, Gerard. The things that you missed. Well, what are you going to do? It's no, important no. that, you know, I stress that we were never, my sister and I were never exposed to of hardcore course not. sex. No, your children. father. Your Our lawyer makes yeah. us say that, but it, it's the truth. You know, we were on yeah. a film set. And that was exciting yeah. for us. I mean, there's scenes, if you're familiar with the film, there's a scene with um, Linda Lovelace and Dolly Sharp in the pool. Mm -hmm. And so every time they yelled cut, you know, my sister and I would jump back in the pool. Absolutely. And when they were getting ready to roll, we'd have to climb out again mm -hmm. and wait quietly off in the grass. Well, we, um, we here at the Hammer Radio Show want to talk to our lawyers uh, where we will <laughs> definitely uh, prove the fact that they were not in ever... Uh, on a porn <laughs> set at the same time as pornography being made. I would say that because yeah. your father wasn't like that. Your father, that's what I'm saying. Your father was, a, was a a, an actual father first. Let's be honest. The guy didn't want his kids corrupted. He wasn't like doing all this stuff to be an asshole. He was a legendary guy. First off and foremost, at the end of the day, besides just being a great dad, Gerard, I have to ask this because this this is the one that shocked me a little bit. Your dad was a hairdresser. Am I correct? When he, when he, you know, he, early in his life was a hairdresser, and then went on to create some of the most epic porn in the history of porn. How the hell does that happen? How does he go from VO five <laughs> to freaking making some of the best movies in the world? That's crazy. Well, I mean, truth, truth be known, when Deep Throat was being filmed, he still had the beauty salon. It wasn't until uh, some time after that where, you know, after the success of the film and he was able to then get steady work as a director, that he and my, and my mom were able to close the shop, as they called it. Yeah. So he wasn't just the director one time. He was, I mean, a, a hairdresser, you know, a long time before. He was a hairdresser all the way through, even after Deep Throat. That's, but it's just a crazy transition because I know a lot of hairdressers that couldn't direct traffic, <laughs> let alone direct uh, some of the most <laughs> epic movies that I've ever seen. Like, think about it. The 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 uh, the uh, Deep Throat by itself was a cultural phenomenon to the fact that everyone and their mother can't wait for Exotica because you guys are going to be at Exotica over the weekend playing <laughs> Deep Throat, right? Or at least talking hey, about yes. Deep Throat. Well, no, we'll, we're going to be doing both. Okay, good. Um, we will be presenting a 4K restoration of the film that nice. we created last year for its uh, 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, we, my sister and I present the film live, and then you know, afterwards we talk a bit about it and take, uh, take questions from the audience because there's certainly you know, a lot of stories that surround the film itself, mm -hmm. and um, you know, people are very curious about it, especially – we found um, at Exotica Miami, we mm -hmm. were down there in June and we presented the film 
And um, we had just come off of a world tour where we showed the film in, you know, six countries, 17 cities, you know, almost 25 shows. And at Exotic in Miami, for the first time, people were asking us, what is Deep Throat? Because we found that there was a very young crowd there, um, many of which are professionals or, you know, stars, cam girls, um, uh. sex workers of different, you know, the different stripes. And they might be performing Deep Throat, but they didn't really know the history or the origin of it. People literally asked us, is this a movie about, about Watergate? <laughs> and so we had to we had to literally write you know write out a, a flyer that we handed out to some people when they said well what what is deep throat because it's a lot to try to explain the history now you know our father came up with the term deep throat he didn't come up with the technique you know that's been no. around for centuries right yeah, but he, he came up with a catchy name for it. And he was more proud of that than he was of even directing the film. Yeah, it's like a brand. He used to say, I, "I made a new word. I'm, I'm in the dictionary now. How many people do you know that made up a made it into the dictionary?" Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm. So, but, that, um, but you're right. That's what I'm talking about. Your father went out, you know, and made a movie that legitimately had, not only has it stood the test of time. That's why we're going to watch the 4K freaking version at uh, Exotica over the weekend. And I'm going to, I know that Lucy Sunflower is going to be at the booth with you, too, dressed up as Linda Lovelace and doing all the... It's going to be like just... A, it's going to be a thing. It's going to be a, a destination at Exotica to check out. Because uh, I know I'm excited. I definitely am going to check it out over the weekend. I want to watch... I want to sit with a group of people... Watch Deep Throat, and I want to hear some of these questions. I want to learn some of the hubbub and the the behind the scenes stuff and all that, like little tidbits. Because first of all, I'm a, I'm a film buff to begin with, but this is a movie that is. And think about it. You just you were joking around about Watergate. Think it, about that that, it, that it's in our lexicon as right. connected to Watergate because that word Deep Throat became the the secret guy that they met in the fucking parking garage. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. cr you mean like it's all connected in some weird way. I Billy. mean, even when they advertised that they were doing the you know that movie, they're like, "Oh, Deep Throat blows the yeah. cover off." You yeah. know, and it's like, wow, <laughs> you know, it's cr that's what I'm saying. It, it, it changed. It's, this so is a much big. This is a big movie. Gerard, and it's a big reason, and it's awesome that you are going to be part of, like, you. first of all, you're part of history. You, your family, you, your sister, your father, everybody, part of history. And now, for the first time, like, the novices, the people that have to, that should be, the generation that should have learned from the legends that came before it, I say it all the time, sit under the learning tree of the things that came before, actually learn, and because for most people, how are you not going to, if you don't know the movie Deep Throat, you haven't lived. Because that's a movie that <laughs> is... Sure. It, that's a fucking... It's a cultural phenomenon. It's something that's in the lexicon. Like you just said, your father's in a dictionary, mm -hmm. for Christ's sake. The terminology Deep Throat is in the dictionary, for Christ's sake. How do you not know these things? And then you're going to be a cam girl, or you're going to be in porn yourself and not know... The, the 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 things that came before. I mean, come on, that's crazy. Well, that's the beauty of these things, you know, to keep, <laughs> well, keep them alive. Well, yeah. well, that's why we're we're headed to Exotica, not just for entertainment, but for education. Absolutely. Well, that, sure. and, and I know everyone's sitting there going, Eddie, why are you getting so high strung about a porno? This is more than a porno. Like I just said before, Gerard Damiano Jr., who's on the phone with us, legitimately is porn royalty. This is like one of those movies. <laughs> That it, it, that's what I was saying. It's somebody that came before that created something. His daddy, Sir Gerard. Yeah, yeah. His yeah, Sir Gerard of the Knights of the Poon Table. He legitimately had a father who created something. Think about that. If that's one of your movies, Joe, you you were in the record business. Sure. You you performed on stages. You did stuff. Sure. Imagine if you did one song. Oh, right. Absolutely. Just absolutely. If, no offense to your father, Gerard. Fuck all the other movies he made. Let's just say that right now. Right? Let's just go with one. We're going with Deep Throat. Joe, you make one song on mm. one album that has done so much. Do you know what I mean? Like, like that yeah. somebody's asking for a 4K edition that you're going to play at some convention. Oh, that's Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a phenomenal thing. Yeah, I got, I got uh, friends. Um, <laughs> yeah. My boys who wrote Turn the Beat Around. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal song. Yeah. Right? One of the greatest, 100 greatest songs sure. ever done. Yeah. Right? They, they, they live off that song. 
live off it. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. as they should. You know, the royalties that come in from oh, that. Absolutely. I can imagine the, world. the only rock and roll shows. Forget about it. Yeah, and and it that. was written in 76. Yeah. 76 it was done. Yeah. And they're still making money on it. I, I have a friend who wrote, wrote, I want you, I need you, I love you, fellow. Elvis Presley back in the 50s. Mm-hmm. He was living on that song. And he Forever. Passed, he passed away now, mm-hmm. but he was living on that song for like 50 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Gerard, mm-hmm. do you get royal? Like, not you. I don't know. I, I'm not trying to pipe into your personal finances. But are there are there are there royalties flooding in from uh, Deep Throat? Because there's got to be Deep Throat merchandise. You, I've seen Deep Throat T-shirts, and hell, I've seen a Deep Throat lunchbox. What the phrase? It's weird. The phrase I've, seen deep throat. I've seen it. I've seen them. You mean somebody was eating the pickle while watching? Yeah. They while, might have. They, they, they took out the lunchbox. They were learning from Linda Lovelace. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so go ahead. <laughs> are, 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 I don't want to open your finances, but I'm asking: Are there money? Is there money coming in? From this, because this, I think there's even action figures, Ricky. I, think, I swear to God, there's everything. Get action out of here. Dude, they make they make everything now. I'm picturing make... Linda Lovelace action figures. Right, wait, let, wait, wait, let's hear from, let's hear from Gerard first because he would know more than we would. Go ahead, Gerard. Uh, well, I mean, there there is um, a long time where no, we didn't receive any royalties or residuals. My father didn't see any money from this film, and that you know, was a great tragedy yeah. because it's still considered to be the most profitable film of all time. Absolutely. And so he, um, you know, let's say early on lost control of the film. He had some partners that were, let's say, unscrupulous businessmen, and, um, you know, he got paid a very small amount um and felt lucky to get away with his life. Now, right. You know, right. Well, I mean, your life, yeah. Your life's kind of important. So, I understand. Yeah, you want to keep that. Yeah. That's, um, that's the way so, the business was back then. You know, that was a long time ago. And, um, you know, this is something that troubled our father till the end of his life. Uh, as I, um, I, I could imagine, he, yeah. That's always the way, though. You know, least. and he wasn't thinking, I wish I had the money. He would say, you know, think of the movies that I could make, have made sure. if yeah, I had that money. He, he could have piggybacked. Go, oh, sure. yeah. You know, looking for financing and so forth. Um, but uh, we were able to sort out the um, the legal issues surrounding the film, the copyright issues surrounding the film. And the uh, rights revert back to the author, which was our father who wrote, directed, edited, uh, wrote the lyrics to the song in the film, um, songs in the film, and like that. So, um, you know, now I'm happy to say there is Deep Throat merch available. There. See, you know, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't crazy. Posters and so forth. Lunchbox, you know, I don't know. I think we might be talking I, I saw, I saw <laughs> it was a deep throat lunchbox. It was yellow. It had Linda Lovelace on the front. Oh, there you go. And I swear to God, I think I think that you could deep throat the, the, the thermos that was inside. I think that was the, the trick. That was the trick. But <laughs> fucking kid had that. I, did some, I didn't say it was a kid. These adults buy these things. Where you, I didn't say that some kid showed up at kindergarten going, "This is well, when you hear when you hear lunchbox, you yeah. think kids." Well, you also you hear lunchbox. I think about going down on the chick too. Yeah, that's, that's also true things. too. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 thing though is, are you going to be? Uh, uh, am I going to be able to buy a deep throat T shirt? Because I I really do. I need. I think I need to buy one now. I think I need to help to the cause. Well, well, for you, I think we got one. Oh! Um, but for all your listeners and all your friends and fans and anybody at Exotica, you can visit us at uh, booth 1047. There you go. And, uh, you know, tell them Eddie sent you. Tell us Eddie sent you, and you get a discount. Yeah. Okay. Tell them that Eddie sent you, and you have to pay double. There but you either go. way, <laughs> either way, you'll get a T-shirt. So there you go. I cannot wait. This is one thing I'm very excited for. For I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Usually excited for Exotica. I, I mean, don't get, who doesn't like boobs? No. Who doesn't like ass? Who, who doesn't do? like porn stars? No. I understand everybody. You go there. Bisexual Marcus is fucking foaming at the mouth. I understand. We love it. But I'm excited because I want to sit there and I actually want to watch. Yeah. I want to watch Deep Throat. I think I want to sit there. I haven't seen Deep Throat the movie. Because if I just say I haven't seen Deep Throat in a while, someone's going to go, because you got a small dick! That's why! But I'm saying, if I haven't seen Deep Throat the movie in, fuck, the full movie in years. In years. And so I'm going to do that over the weekend, Edison, New Jersey. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to say hi to Gerard, <laughs> hi to his sister, hi to uh, Susie uh, Sunflower. 
who's going to be dressed up as Linda Lovelace. I'm going to say hi. I'm going to watch the movie. It's going to be very nice, very wholesome entertainment for the whole family. That's bring right. the kids and bring their lunch boxes. That's right. Um, the, well, well I, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I not only encourage you, to, but all your listeners to come and see the movie together in a communal setting in, yeah. in a, as a theatrical experience. Because when Deep Throat first came out in 1972 that was one of the most significant things about it is right. that it got people and by people i really mean women and couples to go to brave times square mm -hmm. to brave the deuce and go to uh, adult theater and see a porn movie right this yeah. was unprecedented at the time you know it was mostly what we refer to as the raincoat crowd sure. you know yeah. guys who would go either wearing raincoats or come with newspapers and sit there with newspapers on their lap and mm -hmm. you hear newsprint ruffling you know for the for the whole movie yeah well that's by the <laughs> so, way how i'm going to you know, exotica back, just so everyone knows i'll be the guy raincoat, in the raincoat newspaper yeah <laughs> so, you know, that was really the most revolutionary thing about Deep Throat um, was this mainstream crossover where now people were lining up in front of the theater, lines are wrapped around the block um, mm. just to see the film. And so it's hard for younger people today to imagine that because now most porn is consumed on a smartphone under the covers or whatever. Right. Um, Tell me about it. So to go... So, so to go, you know, out in public and sit in the theater with, a, you know, could be a couple hundred people, yeah. you know, and in Times Square, there were some big theaters and to watch a movie together and have a theatrical experience, which is very different than watching, you know, something by yourself. Um, you know, I, I heard John Landis speak. We showed the film in um, in uh, Bologna last summer at the Cinema Ritrovato Festival, and uh, we presented the the 50th anniversary, you know, restoration of Deep Throat. John Landis was there to present the Blues Brothers. And he spoke about um, just what I'm saying, seeing film in a communal setting. He says that the, you know, the jokes are funnier. Mm -hmm. the, the laughs are louder. The scares are bigger. When you watch a movie together with other people, it's more infectious. Um, and so, you know, again, that's the way... Deep Throat came onto the scene 50 years ago, and it was very novel then. But it's still novel now because people can't imagine going out to see a right. porn movie with a, with other people. And so after you know going on this tour and showing the film in different cities and different places, you know, it was really interesting to get the crowd reaction, and you know, it was overwhelming positive response. People are very surprised when they see the film. Um, people who've never seen it. Everybody's heard of it, mm -hmm. but nowadays most people have not actually seen it, or they say, oh, I've seen clips, but they haven't really seen the whole movie, and people are surprised that how funny it is, yes. how light it is, how kooky it is, and corny it is. You know, they're not expecting that. And look, I'm going to tell, so really tell you, Gerard, oh, to your ahead. face. I'm going to tell you, Gerard, to your face. This might be the first time I ever watch pornography and not masturbate until I get home. <laughs> Because I will be sitting in a communal, it's in a communal group, and I want I want a whole bunch. I want that hundred people. I want more than that. I want everybody to come to Exotica and show up and watch the movie and and learn something. Learn, thrive on the history, Mo. Thrive on suck. Let it soak in. Come on, Billy. Suck it in, Billy. Come on, join us. Become one of us, Billy. I'll be in South Carolina. On that note, uh, Gerard, I do have to say goodbye to you because we got to go to break again. But I wanted to say thank you, sir. You are porn royalty. Your family is porn royalty. I uh, can't wait to see you and your sister over the weekend. I mm -hmm. uh, cannot wait to uh, be a part of this. Thank you so much for being on the show, sir. Well, well, thank you for having me. And to everyone out there that might be um, at Exotica, mm -hmm. Saturday night, 8 p.m., the main ballroom. Come and watch Deep Throat together with Eddie and the rest of us. Yes. And um, also, if you're not able to make it, check out DamianoFilms.com backslash shop for that uh, Deep Throat merch that you were talking about. And um, we'll have to look into those lunch boxes. Yeah, please right? do. There might be a market there. there you go. Please do. I would because the old, the old school, you know. 
the, the guys that were working in the factories. Yeah, we the go Fred with Flintstone. The, Fred yeah. Flintstone. Yeah, I don't I know. I don't, go I don't, with one of those lunch. Yeah. I want no. I want one of those good. <laughs> I want that nice yellow with the with, with Linda Lovelace on the cover. That's no, what we want. That's what I want. We could have the thermos with lips. <laughs> yes. Ooh, the thermos could have lips. Joe just came up with a good I idea. Sure. That would be good. The Linda Lovelace thermos. Oh, how wonderful. Uh, Gerard Damiano at Damiano Films, D A M I A N O Films on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Check it out. Check out the website itself, like he just said. Buy the merch. Keep the dream alive. Keep Deep Throat alive. It is a legendary movie. I will see you over the weekend. Everyone else, get off your ass. Show up to Exotica, Edison, New Jersey. Over the weekend, more details on that, go to ExoticaExpo.com. Thank you, Gerard, for being on the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you, okay. sir. And, and make those lunch boxes. Come on. <laughs> Let's get some lunch boxes going on here. All right. Thank you, Gerard. I'll talk to you later. I'll see you over the weekend, sir. Okay. Uh, all right. Till then, right, thank bro. you. Till then, right. thank you.